Good morning. Welcome our esteemed uh, panelists on the dais and our esteemed uh, delegates who are in the audience. Uh, we are a uh, focused uh, group of experts in this room and it's an honor uh, to be uh, moderating this session. Let me request uh, before I start this uh, panel uh, to uh, uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Uh, Ibtisam Al Bastaki, who is the Director of Investment and Public and Private Partnerships Department, Dubai Health Authority. Uh, we are honored to have you here. And in this room, uh, we have a uh, lot of uh, private hospitals and private uh, uh, healthcare uh, sector companies who are health IT and various other uh, companies from the private sector who are uh, participating here. So if, uh, 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 before we start this uh, panel, if uh, you can speak about some of the vision of the DHA in engaging the private sector and uh, increasing investments in uh, Dubai. Uh, first of all, thank you very much of having me this morning um, in this um, amazing uh, seminar and uh, I believe uh, healthcare investment um, and public-private partnership started in Dubai um, since 2018 when the Crown Prince have approved the strategy of investment in healthcare. And the reason behind this, um, as we were growing in Dubai, uh, the private sector has um, as more dominant in the market, and that's because of the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum how basically we want to support and engage the private sectors and to complement each other in terms of uh, delivering the service appropriately and more efficiently for our populations. And you know that Dubai has a certain advantage uh, and the, one of the advantage is considered to be as a hub and it has a very good infrastructure in terms of the transportations. And as well as we do have a age group of young age group. So people are aging from um, say, you know, from the birth until age of 65. And then you can think of what kind of a disease we are basically considering on, on this uh, area. And of course we are growing older with time. And uh, since the uh, private sector's market share has improved Improved in the market, uh, so considered to be number of inpatient outpatients in the market about 80 percent uh, owned by the private sector and 20 percent by the government sector. So therefore, we wanted to do more kind of you know uh, support and how basically we can attract more private entities to our market to bring the know-how, the knowledge to improve the healthcare system in the market. So therefore, we had um, promoting and facilitating for a lot of the private sector coming to our market, from pharma industry to healthcare fa facilities, to professionals, as well as to other healthcare industries. We did as well a lot of work in terms of the PPP projects. We are now uh, working on a very um, unique projects when it comes to the center of excellence and that to bring the, the, the right uh, to our market. The third thing, uh, basically, we want to um, uh, bring the international players to our market. And therefore, we had a couple of good ones um, without mentioning names, but we have plenty of outstanding international players who are working closely with the public sectors uh, for the benefit of our patients. So at the end, it's the win-win situation, uh, how we can complement each other, how basically we can improve the sustainability of the healthcare market between the public and the private sector. That's for me. Fantastic. I think uh, Dubai is a hub of this uh, innovation and uh, uh, Dubai has been inviting private sector in a big, big way each and every sector of the economy and healthcare is no, uh, no exception at all. And uh, we can see this uh, thriving private sector collaboration happening in Dubai. I think uh, it is an inspiration for uh, many other uh, countries to uh, learn from uh, Dubai in uh, private sector engagement. Let me request our uh, next uh, panelist, uh, 
who is like uh, Dr. Muhammad uh, Al Mali, who uh, recently spoke about this uh, virtual hospitals and the, the regulatory uh, sandbox. So, uh, asking you this, that uh, 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 what is the inspiration behind this uh, 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 initiative of regulatory sandbox? How uh, 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 your department got inspired to like do this? And what have been the major impact and outcomes of uh, you know, this initiative? Thank you so much for that question. Uh, once again, it's an honor being here. Uh, so as I mentioned that healthcare is being reshaped and the introduce, introduction of uh, uh, the new technologies that are reshaping and changing the way we deliver healthcare. Uh, healthcare is we're dealing with patients, their quality of life, um, their uh, um, health is at stake. So we need to be very careful in introducing uh, new innovations or new solutions. Uh, we see that a lot of innovations in other sectors have started and then later on the regulations and legislation have been changed through it. We see a lot of apps, for example, Uber. You can easily just start and then see how the compliance and then just change and uh, yes, there are a lot of challenges and mistakes happened at the beginning and then we can work it on until we evolve. But in healthcare, we can't. We don't harm the patient. We have to start in a safe environment. We have to de-risk any solution. We have to really have a deep analysis from a technology assessment, from a disease pathway to ensure that we are doing everything before introducing those innovations. We saw what happened uh, during the COVID. A lot of um, apps have been introduced uh, that might be risking the uh, security of the patient or made by giving a wrong uh, vital signs and will not make the doctor make an informative decision. These are all challenges we've been seeing and I am pretty sure that everybody here has been seeing. Each day we see a new innovation, a new solution. So. The way is that just when we talked to the leadership, we told them that there is a lot of innovation. And the one first top blocker is the regulation are not helping them. We are being very strict on them. There need to be sometimes understanding and having this complexity theory, looking at it from different angles and making sure. And actually this will help us, for example, from the Ministry of Health, to make sure the effectiveness of our, our regulation. So when we introduce a new solution, we look at from our eyes and different eyes, eyes in the ecosystem. We make sure that we reflect also the patient is being involved in the journey where we're having and reflecting the feedback and making sure. We've been introducing sometimes amazing innovation and you don't see the doctor or the patient are adopting them and they don't want to change. Change always is a difficult, that's why there, there is change management department in every organization. So how can I make sure that all the process have been studied, all the process are not harming the patient, all the process are adding value. So that's why we got the support. We studied how can this speed up the leveraging of new cutting edge technologies and AI. Uh, Dr. Jani talked about the AI. AI is considered to be a medical device. So we consider AI actually in healthcare a medical device. They need to obtain the Saudi FDA, for example, in the kingdom, so they can use it on patients. These are not supervised. Some of them in the clinical trials or research are being compared between the healthcare professional and it's being used as an assistant tool. But when we introduce it as a medical device, there is accountability and liability. Who's, who's liable for if it's making a harm to the patient? So that's why we need to make sure that everything or any technology that have been introduced, it goes through their pathway from metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality, AI, and such on. So uh, that's how we started. And that's why uh, the aim of this regulatory sandbox is being established.
thank you i think this uh, idea of uh, uh, like um, having this uh, sandbox for regulatory uh, ecosystem is a very very innovative idea which uh, might be replicated by many other countries of the world and uh, on my left uh, i have uh, with us dr mohammad al johani who is a director of ministry of health saudi arabia and i will request him to ask about like uh, what is the strategy for healthcare services innovations in um, saudi and what is the government uh, doing about it uh good morning and thank you uh for introduction okay regarding the strategy the strategy is depending on the the issue in hand uh what we aiming to uh, resolve and in what domain we like to have it for example one of the milestone uh, goals in our vision in 2030 is the, ac the access to the healthcare and it's a critical for us to have uh, easy access for the patients because in some days we are becoming a patient uh, to the, our hospitals so we would like to make sure uh, we have a decent legacy to the, our health services to uh, facilitate and uh, support the services for uh, our community uh me as a medical director in uh, king faisal general hospital uh, in hasa uh, cluster uh, the community that we uh, have the opportunity to implement a couple of strategy to overcome uh, the limited access they face there uh, one of the the planning we had uh, is to divide the medical services we provide into four phases uh, we starting with uh, preventive uh, services uh, and improve the quality of life also in the emergency as well as uh, the chronic uh, diseases so the strategy we followed to uh, improve the home care services which was a hectic uh, uh, business model we have to overcome Uh, wants to do um, to implement a pilot study for the community we have and to provide uh, for them a monitoring devices so the source of data is the patient we are the source of the of, of the data uh, for our health uh, situation so the idea was to make the patient have the uh, literacy uh, needed and uh, the ability to decide what option he can uh, go with regarding his health uh, we uh, emphasize empowering the autonomy for the patient to decide what outcome he needed so uh, we tried that uh, we implement uh, sahati uh, platform uh, sahati platform it's uh, i prefer to call it a personal health record for the individual he can take an appointment it's not per se a personal health record but it's have its a capability to integrate uh, this information so we did that pilot uh, we had a sample of patients uh, from different uh, region of the area and we implemented that uh, sensor and uh, blood glucose level and so on the outcome was amazing regarding uh, how they adhere to the treatment how they adhere to the medication uh, the outcome was amazing uh, we planning now to limit it for the most 70% of the population there so to reduce the the cost for our services and the region since it's high demand on the governmental services also to, to uh, minimize the crisis management uh, we had in our er uh, emergency so the strategy of course it depend on uh, what domain we would like to focus on for example the home care services uh, we thought it's uh, piloting the community was one of the good uh, strategy to do and uh, thank you excellent uh, uh, inputs and insights so i can uh, always ask more uh, uh, questions here but i would uh, uh, love to have like an interactive session here so if uh, there are any uh the pointers or questions uh, 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 from the audience we will like love to have them
So uh, at like uh, this stage, anyone has one? Yes, uh, Rashmi ji, yes. Garimati, uh, we can have a mic here. Thank you, Ravi ji. I'm Dr. Reshmi Saluja. I am chairperson of Relegate Enterprises. We are into financial services and we are also into health insurance, the largest health insurance in India. And I have my colleague, Mr. Rakesh Asthana. So thank you for inviting us. In fact, this is the time when India and UAE relationships are at the best in the, whether it is B2B, any other business, or of course in the governmental sector. One of the best ways that we can actually partner from country to country rather than making it in a very generalized global manner is how we can actually take health tourism between uh, Dubai, or rather UAE and Dubai uh, preferably because this is where the new business hub and where the new economic development is happening, whether it is from India or from the globally. But I really see that if we can actually collectively create a uh, uh, health tourism background, which is uh, in a collaborative manner, um, also working with uh, health insurance, which should work as one. Because we should try and work on getting the economy boost to these two countries from the globe. So what are your, uh, Madam, this question is to you, what are your uh, innovative ideas on actually creating this collaboration as so you know like as a one model and not two different models one model whether it is economic strength or whether it is health wise because if you have a fantastic health model backing with the insurance your economically strength will really really increase I have started my offices here. Care Health Insurance has a very strong presence here. And I see a lot of um, strength coming forward. In case you want to add something. Yeah, the point raised is very valid. And back in India, we are having a large number of people coming to India for the treatment because of the quality of the doctors and the facilities there. Dubai has come up with the wonderful facilities, world-class facilities, so far as healthcare is concerned. So this area can be explored to the advantage of both the countries. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for your uh, questions or the points that you have raised now. Um, to be honest, first of all, I'm not handling health insurance and DHA. So I have my colleagues who are actually taking the the care of the all health funding, um, including you know aspects of the health tourism as well. However, from my understanding, it's an area needs to be served. It's an area that we really need to look at it. Especially Dubai is considered to be a hub for tourism. Now you have touched different aspects from health tourism people who comes to Dubai to seek their treatment here or the tourist who comes in and basically how we can maintain their health status when they are in Dubai to ensure their accessibility to the private and public sectors. This is actually the two elements that we really need to focus on. And I think if you just contact us and I'll put you in a right team and they can basically come with the, um, you know, if there is nothing there, definitely they can create, but if there is something there, they can always explore it or build up on it. From the patients um, transferring, transferring patients or medical tourism from Dubai to India, this is another uh, game itself because we have an office for overseas treatment and they are taking care of our patients. And always, because of the generosity of the government, they're giving them an option where they need to go to be treated, whether in Thailand, India, UK, US, and it's an, an option of even an agreement between the government of Dubai as well as the government of the country that the patient would be sent over there. The, definitely, it's, a, it's, it's something always we, we touch base because sometimes you don't need to build a whole infrastructure in a place where you have a few patients only to be treated. However, it is better to send to an expert where you have a full infrastructure where the patients can be treated in their home, in the country itself. So there is a lot of um, 
um, I mean, discussions need to be touched. It's been touched somehow, but it's been kept for a while. And I think that I'm sure that there is a lot of um, area is going around it. So the best thing, if you just communicate with us and we'll put you in the right uh, channel and right track in DHA. Mr. Me, um, may I have to add some comments to Dr. Tissam? My name is uh, Dr. Taha Ibrahim. I am the general uh, director, UAE country general director of Dr. Suleiman Habib uh, Hospital and Clinics in Dubai and in Emirates. Um, regarding the healthcare tourism, um, Dubai Health Authority have established a very strong platform and uh, there is a department dedicated Having said that, uh, you can access the DHA website. There is something called DHS. And this is concerned with all the people who participate. Actually, we went um, into a roadshow into different Gulf countries, and uh, we met many partners in that countries too, in Saudi Arabia, in Bahrain, and in Qatar, in Kuwait. And we build up some sort of uh, collaborative uh, relationship. Um, uh, the, the most important challenge here is that the, uh, how we calibrate from the insurance perspective. Just to add to what Dr. Tisham is saying now, uh, if you go to the Dubai Health Authority website, you can find that all the hospitals in Dubai who participate in, in healthcare tourism, they are also uh, accepting international uh, insurance. So there is a sector for international insurance. And also there is facility here in, um, in Dubai Health Authority is to facilitate buying insurance for the people who want to come here. Uh, I add another uh, dimension to the healthcare tourism in Dubai. Um, they start uh, uh, putting something called medical visa. So you can apply for the medical visa uh, through the providers. So we are one of the providers and we expand this uh, even to visa to our uh, sister hospitals in Saudi Arabia. Because we are uh, there in Saudi Arabia, we are a giant there in the healthcare. So we extend visa for Dubai, also extend visa for Saudi Arabia. So if any patients want to come, uh, it's easy to go to the website of DHA. I can uh, apply for visa through one of the providers. And uh, we also went uh, even uh, extra mile in building up uh, some sort of collaboration with hotels in Dubai to give a special rate for those people. So Dubai Health Authority have done a great job so far in healthcare tourism. You need just to liaise with the right people there, as Dr. Tissam said, and you can find that there is, uh, it's easy. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, I can uh, 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 see some hands, but I will uh, request any of the uh, uh, questions to be directed to the Saudi uh, speakers also, uh, so that uh, we have, so, yeah. Oh, okay, so, okay, yeah, uh, you can uh, uh, <coughs> introduce yourself and then ask me. Hi, good morning. My name is Muna Abdurrahman Haji. I'm a PhD candidate and I'm working as a senior clinical research coordinator at SSMC in partnership with the Mayo Clinic. So my question is for Dr. Mohammed Al Juhani, and uh, thank you all for the panelists actually for the nice uh, speech. My question is the, for the kind of service that you are having or you've already spoke, how you can assure uh, for the um, marginalized or like people who don't have insurance or who are, uh, can't have like regular access care to benefit from that? Thank you so much. Thank you for a great question. Uh, basically, we are a governmental hospital, and we have in that region, <clears throat> only in the Hassa city, we have a seven uh, hospital. Uh, two of them are uh, tertiary hospital, and five of them is secondary hospital, along with uh, 265 primary healthcare uh, there. 
So uh, we make sure regarding that it's only piloting. That's the reason we use the pilot uh, strategy. Because yeah, what you, ha what you have asking about, it's a valid. Not all of them, they have access to, the, to having the connection for that. But they had the opportunity to contact with either the doctor in the primary care, or they can have a physical uh, visit to the secondary hospital regarding the preventive cases. So that's the reason, and when we discuss on the table uh, how to make sure, that's the reason we direct us to using a pilot strategy to ensure we cover uh, a large range group of that population. So additionally, uh, they, they have a high demand uh, on the medical services, especially in the government. Uh, the private hospital in that region, it's almost uh, three hospitals uh, with bid capacity, 500 bids. Uh, so, and the company there, uh, they ensure uh, they have a community services regarding these people they didn't have, especially in emergency. So what you're asking, it's actually what happened during the discussion to building the strategy. Thank you. Excellent. So I think uh, uh, we had this amazing session, amazing questions and amazing answers by our esteemed panelists. We are honored to have you all. And we have the whole day, which is like very, very interesting sessions already ahead of us. So we are already across the time. So I will not uh, get into like giving another concluding remarks, but I am uh, highly excited and highly delighted that we have an excellent participation from several countries, including Ukraine, UK, and several other people who are uh, who are representing several parts of the world and i think we are going to have a very very exciting day so with this i conclude here and invite my colleague karima on the stage